President Rouhani renews his country's stance by Syria and its support against terrorism. Lavrov calls on the U.S. to coordinate directly with Syria in the campaign against the terrorist organization of ISIS. Syrian Arab army restores security to wider areas in Jobar of Damascus countryside and liberates three villages in Al-Hasaka countryside. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Irado Krikorian with the news in English. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani renewed his country's stance in support of Syria against terrorism. During his meeting with Vice Prime Minister, Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid al muallim head of the Syrian delegation at the International Conference to Reject Violence and Extremism, which started its works in Tehran today, Rouhani called on those who founded the terrorist organizations and supported them to stop doing so, pointing out that Syria, by the steadfastness of its army and people, is able to confront terrorism. Minister al muallim briefed the conference on the dimensions of the terrorism in Syria and the role of some regional and western countries which are known for their support of the terrorist organizations, emphasizing the need to experience pressure on them to stop that support. al muallim asserted that Syria, by the steadfastness of its army and people, is able to defeat terrorism and to restore security and stability. The foreign minister also extended thanks to Iran for its support to Syria in various fields. In his opening speech at the conference in which 40 countries take part, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani asserted that the world needs major great steps to fight extremism, calling on the countries which helped the emergence of terrorism to fund the efforts needed to stop its repercussions. Rouhani also called for an active coordination between all countries to eliminate terrorism. In Moscow, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov called on the U.S. to coordinate directly with Syria in the campaign against the terrorist organization of ISIS in Syria. In an interview with Navosti News Agency, Lavrov said, It is not possible to successfully fight terrorism on a territory of a sovereign country without a proper coordination with the legitimate authorities in that country. Lavrov added that in many occasions Moscow has called on Washington to contact with the Syrian government in the war against the terrorist organization of ISIS, but Washington refused. Lavrov pointed out that the U.S. has never viewed Russia as a direct partner in the alliance against ISIS, which was founded by Washington itself to suit its special doctrines and standards without paying any respect to the international law. Lavrov viewed as not convincing the calls by U.S. officials to join the fight against the terrorist organization of ISIS. Meanwhile, during a press conference with his Belgian counterpart Didier Reinders in Moscow, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov voiced concern over the growing activities of the terrorist extremist organizations, including ISIS in Syria and the region. Patriarch of Antioch and all the east of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate, John X Yazuji has called for consolidating means of dialogue and relinquishing extremism and the various Western ideologies on the history of the countries of the east. He underlined that the only way out of the Syrian crisis is political and peaceful one, asserting that the Christians would remain in their homelands despite all hardships. Syrian Arab army units have controlled many buildings in Jobar area in Damascus countryside in the vicinity of the 4th Industrial School, killing many terrorists who took shelter in these buildings. In Al-Hasaka countryside, Syrian Arab army units has cleared a subha Tawq al-Milih Qabr Amir from all terrorists and restored security and stability to them. Not worthy, worthy is that Syria, this military operations aims to thwart any attempt by the terrorists to infiltrate to Al-Hasaka province. <laughs> Well,
American back. The Lebanese army confronted the terrorists who attempted to sneak toward military sites from Arsal to Reims. With the participation of the Lebanese surveillance planes, the army carried out preemptive operation against the terrorist gatherings in Arsal to Reims and Al Qalamun, specifically in the valleys of Martiba, Mira, Al Rahwa, Hmayyad, and Al Khil, killing many terrorists and injuring others. A number of Iraqi students were killed and several others injured in an attack by ISIS on a bus near Al Wahda village south of Kirkuk. Earlier, the U.S. Defense Minister Chuck Hagel had arrived to Baghdad in an unannounced visit to discuss the issue of fighting ISIS. Hagel's visit was part of his last tour as Defense Minister after he submitted his resignation recently, and U.S. President Barack Obama nominated Ashton Carter for the post as his successor. Amnesty has asserted in a report that the last Israel aggression on Gaza Strip is tantamount to a war crime. It has further indicated that there have been evidence that Israel had deliberately destroyed many parts in Gaza, calling upon the United Nations to form a fact-finding committee. Amnesty pointed out that all Israeli officials who proved to be responsible for committing these crimes should be brought to justice. Finally, in Yemen, nine soldiers were killed in three terrorist attacks targeted the army headquarters southeast of the country. A military source said that two suicide bombers driving two car bombs have broken through the military area command in Hadramaut, blowing themselves up there, killing seven soldiers and injuring eight, whereas another two Yemeni soldiers were killed during an ambush set by Al-Qaeda terrorists in the country's southeast. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this version again, you can always visit our site in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.